Hello and welcome to a very special episode of uh, Hello from the Other Side from the Wednesday week. And uh, this weekend we've got Sheffield Wednesday versus Portsmouth, Sheffield Wednesday Pompey, the Wendy Pompey, however way you want to say it. And with me today, there's only one man who's who's qualified enough to talk about that. And it's I've, I've written this down, Guy. It's the FA Pro License Lead. Is that right? Have I got that right? You're correct, yes. That means you're in charge of... Uh, it's Guy Whittaker, by the way. Uh, and, that, <laughs> <laughs> and that means you're in charge of uh, training the trainers. Is it? Is that to... to, to yeah, pretty much, yeah. Message. Coaching the coaches, yeah, around um, yeah the pro licence qualification, which is obviously the one they need to be able to manage in the Premier League. Nice. Not too shabby. So uh, I, I, can we get Will Still a, uh, a pro licence? Because <laughs> then I don't have to read that tweet again. <laughs> about them paying a 22 grand fine every time yeah, because yeah. he's not got the good lord it's tiresome any yeah. road so sheffield wednesday portsmouth obviously a, a fixture that's close to your heart i assume guy right yeah absolutely um uh, yeah great memories of both clubs for, for you know both obvious reasons portsmouth gave me the chance in football um uh and then sheffield wednesday gave me the chance to play um you know regular premier league football so yeah great both great clubs to be at and and similar people i've said it before just similar people good honest hard-working people that want to see you put everything in on the football pitch well you know it, it's uh it's very much appreciated especially uh especially north of the border now i'm gonna i'm probably gonna get uh berated by this but i spent I spent a good amount of my life living in Southampton, so I very much know the rivalry between Portsmouth and Saints, and and, yeah. and I've been to Fratton Park, you know, a number of times and heard the geezer with the bell. Who I was disappointed that wasn't his real heir. You know what I mean? That, <laughs> I, I, that's that's a, that's a wig the man voluntarily puts on with the dreadlocks with the silly hat, which uh, which which was which was a learning curve for me. But um, coming down to Sheffield uh, this this week, coming down to Portsmouth this week are going to be uh, a lot of. Uh, the hardcore supporters, because what we've found, obviously, with the uh, with the points system, the away uh, the away games get filled up quite quickly. Oh, okay. um, so that the fans coming down are going to be the hardcore ones. They're the, right. they're the every weekers. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Yeah. And uh, so I was hoping you could tell us about what we're uh, what we're going to be up against. Now, what I've done is as a little prompt for you. I've uh, I've put the team out here that unfortunately lost against Barnsley, right? Because Portsmouth have been in some stellar form, right? Yeah, I mean, they, they. I think previous to Barnsley, they got twenty points from ten games. Um, you know, new manager in, in John Messino, um, as sort of. I don't. I don't. I don't know whether the right word is free the players up, but um, yeah, they're, they're playing with a bit of freedom, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, uh, yeah, it's a good run of form, obviously. Um, and then they're obviously, scoring goals though as well, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, it's a simple game, really, isn't it? It's not. You know, it's, <laughs> it, it was for you, guy, when you played for this lot. If I'm honest, uh, just get the ball in the box and get someone on the end of it. That's all you have to do. Don't let them do it at the other end. That's basically what, what football's about. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm, you're now just telling me bits from your training course now, aren't you? You're now just. <laughs> you, am I just listening to the bits that out. you're telling? You've yeah, sussed yeah. it out already. I mean, well, obviously, you know, um, uh, Kobe Bishop is the main goal scorer. Obviously, he scored a couple of opening game of the season up at uh, up at uh, mm -hmm. Hillsborough. So he's mm -hmm. he's still in goal scoring form, um, you know, and they're, they're, they're in a, in a way I think, you know, like most teams do, they have strengths in the side, and I'm not telling anybody anything new. You know, he's a decent decent player at this this uh, this level. Um, but what they what they're doing more than he did before is they're getting other people in the box as well. Mm -hmm. So you know, which which mm -hmm. is a striker, which is what something you want. You want to be able to, you know, have have defenders distracted in a way, so you can make, you know, a, a run you want to make rather than, you know, thinking that I'm never going to the end of it because the, the defence is so well organised. Well, that's not too shabby, is it? Like, I, I must admit, so so I was actually surprised to see where Pompey were in the league and and and, and, I, and I thought, I'll take a look back, I'll do a bit of research. I'm talking to Guy Whittingham for fuck's sake, like, you know what I mean? And <laughs> uh, and I realised that the last two games that we played, I, I was at them and there's been like 11 goals <laughs> in the last two games. So so there's going to be goals in this game, right? Well, uh, probably not now. Now you've mentioned Yeah, now I've said that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I would think so. Uh, well, yeah, from Portsmouth's point of view, uh, their defending against Barnsley was was poor, really mm -hmm. poor. Um, they don't, from, from my point of view, another thing we probably might have to say on the course is, you know, when you're playing, make it difficult for the opposition to score. Uh, well, that might I'll be, tell you what, you've, you've cracked that it. That might be guy. pretty good. <laughs> I've got it yeah. sussed, haven't I? 
Um, yeah, get on the phone to Gareth Southgate, and you know <laughs> what I mean. Getting told, it'll, it'll, so, yeah, it'll... but um, yeah, if you if you make if you make mistakes, you're going to get punished. Um, mm-hmm. You know, maybe I mean played Cambridge the week before, and Cambridge could be three 0 up at half time because of really? defensive mistakes, but got away with it against Cambridge, but won't get away with it against Barnsley against Sheffield Wednesday. Won't get away with it. So no, Barnsley, Barnsley are having a good season, but I, I think yeah. I, bar a bar a draw going into the Barnsley game, you had nearly a perfect form record last five yeah. games and, and, and defensively they've been pretty good yeah defensively they've been pretty good it's just the last two games they've given chances away a little bit um cambridge didn't take and barnsley did so mm-hmm. I, I suspect they might try and be a bit tighter in defense this weekend well i think they might have to be because have you seen them wednesdays this season gay have you seen them have you seen them normally normally i'd be sitting here on one of these uh on one of these hello from the other side bits talking about hey listen is there a player that you're uh that you're concerned about uh, but it, all of them, uh, if you've seen the league, yeah, is <laughs> yeah. But you have, haven't you? You got you got a great squad, um, mm. and that's proven it. Was it twenty one games unbeaten? Is that the run? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. So we're, t- we're twenty one games unbeaten, and uh, the I mean they, they've not all been easy either. I mean last week was a hard fought win against one uh, nil against Peterborough, and yeah. there was a one nil against Charlton. So it's not yeah. it's not like we're rolling teams over. We're it's, doing the we're doing the ugly wins, as it were. Yeah, but but that's yeah, that's the sign of a good side, isn't it? When you when do when you're doing that sort of thing and you're winning games, um, you know, by by close margins, I think that's almost better than 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 winning games three or four nil because it shows that you've got it in you to 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 um, to grind results out, like you said. Absolutely, absolutely. So you know, I'm, I'm going to ask the question anyway. Then it, 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 normally I have this caveat at the front. Aside Barry Bannon, is there anybody else that's caught your eye for Sheffield Wednesday this season? Well, I, I obviously go to the strikers. Uh, Michael mm-hmm. Smith was at Portsmouth for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and probably when he was here, I'm not sure we played to his strengths. Again, you know, like Rotherham, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not, am I allowed to mention Rotherham? Uh, you are yes, because oh, okay. uh, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure we'll probably talk about George Hurst in a bit. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Rotherham are going to yeah, pop maybe. up. Um, yeah, I think you know he, he's a you know get the ball in the box. You know that's what he wants. So mm-hmm. um, you know if you're playing against those people, funnily enough, stop getting the stop letting the ball come in the box. <laughs> that might help. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you ever need an advert that the FA have cracked it, <laughs> it it's right here on this interview. <laughs> well, it, it, is, it is a simple game, isn't it? That's a, I, it, I, it is not, a simple game. It's not. It's not as simple as as obviously we're saying, but uh, yeah, I, you know it's yeah. Just stop Barry Bannon playing and stop getting balls in the box. That's there you go. Well, I think that I think that's what we've uh, what's what's been weird. It is weird when you go down a League One because all of a sudden now you become the you're the whipping boy of the championship like we were before we went down. And then now all of a sudden we're the team that people want to beat. Yeah. And, and you can like, but, but we've been rubbish for years. What do you mean you really want to beat Sheffield Wednesday at the weekend? This is, this is insane. However, in the last 20 years, in the last 23 years since Sheffield Wednesday have been in the Premier League, Portsmouth have had a taste of, of Premier League. And and cup finals and yeah. and, and Milan Mandrich and and the way he does business and the and the whole Merson and uh, and all that all that era that, that that Pompey went through. However, I was trying to do some research before before I came to spoke to you, and and obviously I knew a few people who were, I used to play Sunday morning football with a lot of Pompey fans, and I was trying to I was trying to get my head around the the bits around was it about twenty thirteen to twenty seventeen because there, there was League Two in there as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That well, thanks for thanks for bringing that up. That Tell was, me about that guy. That was when I was manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, well, it was I didn't a get that far. Yeah, I didn't get that far down uh, yeah, down Wikipedia, no. mate. Were, were you yeah. there? Were you? My apologies. Yeah, well, all through that time was uh, was another administration the club were in. So, you know, the fans took over the um, t- took over the club. You know, they bought mm-hmm. the club and stopped it from going out of business. That that's essentially. Um, you know what 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 some did um mm-hmm. and that saved the club uh and yeah it wasn't i think we went 21 games without winning a game 24 good games Lord. without winning the game yeah good in Lord. that run um and just it was just backs against the wall thrown out your training ground uh beg steal and borrow cancelled pitches to go and train on you know and 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 for a club the size of portsmouth that was you know that was low it was a low real low yeah yeah um but obviously you know um 
I mean, there was a lot more going on behind the scenes. Like, I, yeah, I you know, I need to, I need to add that caveat by sort of saying, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't the chairman get arrested or a warrant went out for uh, his arrest? Well, or there, was the a, owner? there was Shake Mirage because you could never work out where he was or wherever he's actually really. <laughs> There was, yeah, there was lots, there was lots going on. Lots of, yeah, lots of owners, lots of rumors of different owners coming in. You know, who really knows the truth behind the scenes? Because you never get to find out, don't you? Really, and, and you were there. You know more oh, than yeah, we do. Exactly. Yeah. But all, <laughs> all you really know is that the fans suffer. Mm -hmm. That's it. The fan and good people, uh, you know, there was good people in administration that were losing their jobs. Yeah. But they were good people. Um, normal people yeah yeah and they were you know pompey fans that worked for the club and so that was that was really tough and of course obviously you know i know we're going a bit off off cue here but there was you know people that were owed money by the club that were big fans of the club you yeah. know and you don't you don't really hear about all this sort of stuff and then obviously the you know the lower being in league two and um but you know obviously you know six years since we come out of league two now and like yourselves our fans don't believe that you know, they should be in League One. They don't well, necessarily absolutely. think they should be in the Premier League, but they don't think yeah. they should be in League One. I mean, I think it took it took us twenty years to realise that we're not a Premier League team anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and so we're all right at the Championship. We'd we'd take that. But I, yeah. I guess the, the reason I wanted to drill down on that guy. Sorry, I threw you under the bus there a little bit. But the um, the reason I wanted to drill down on that is I wanted to just stare right down the camera and say, when whenever you think you've got it bad, it could be worse. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what was it? Twenty-four games, not not winning, and then and then Michael Appleton. Uh, w was that the time when he managed so, to? Um, yeah. So Michael Appleton uh, came in, um, then then left. I was putting cards Kate mm. in charge, and that's, that's when right. administration happened. Then that's, that's right. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was quite a tumultuous time. I remember because uh, I remember the Saints fans jibing in on the. Uh, on the uh, on the Pompey fans in the in yeah. the change room in the morning. Now, so let's move on from that, shall we? Let's put a yeah. pin in that. Uh <laughs> I've got some better memories than that. Yeah, yeah, I bet you have. So I tell you what, then let's um, let's talk about John Mazzino. Yeah. Uh, how long has he been there now? Uh, you know, just just by his Over sheer name, five weeks, became a move. Maybe. Six weeks. And 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 what what was the difference? Who, who was the previous gaffer? So it was Cowley, Danny Cowley. That's right, and. um and and they came with this and him and his brother came with this entire um ethos and how great yeah. they are and oh they're doing a great Playing job here and then it, stuff. yeah yeah and and then i mean what 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 do you reckon it was it the 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 cowley brother what was it ethos uh, what's what's the, what's the other word philosophy only yeah. seems to have worked at one club so far and yeah. that was the one about what 5 years ago before they went to the championship oh, and yeah lincoln Lincoln, Lincoln. Huddersfield, didn't they? Um, so, uh, yeah. And it's and it's not really worked anywhere else. Because I remember watching Lincoln. I went to go and watch Eastleigh against Lincoln. And Lincoln was something else. They were really well organised, really played football well. But it doesn't seem to have manifested itself in the big boy leagues. No, I, I mean, look. I mean, what Danny Cowley said when he came in was that he wanted, you know, three, three, um, three transfer windows to get the team playing how he wants them to play. Mm -hmm. Um and look, sometimes you get recruitment right, sometimes you get it wrong. Uh, from the outside, um, and I know I know Danny and Nicky because they did the pro license with us. Um, they yeah. were on the same course as John Messino, funnily enough. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, they 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 have a philosophy, they have a way of working um, that, um, from what I'm led to believe, is um, quite a lot of detail for players. Um, you need to be able to do a lot of work on the pitch. You need to be able to take in a lot of work or, or in the in the in the classroom, if you like. Um, and I, you know, and I, I'm not sure whether they were able to get as much time on the grass as they wanted to because, you know, pitches, the training ground, the pitches aren't, you know, up to up to the standard that you can work morning and afternoon. This is what I'm led to believe. Uh, players were getting a bit fed up of lots of meetings. Is what we've heard. Oh, wow. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Um, and what. I suppose, in a way, what John Messino seems to have done is just simplified. Like I said earlier, he just seemed to, you know, play players in the positions they want to play. Wow, really? Why would you do that? <laughs> is that something new? I'm, I'm, um, hang on a minute. I'm just going to play, play players. <laughs> it's all coming out now. You, I'll pass you on the course once you. Once That's you're it. Yeah, the, I'll just turn up with my boots and I'll guy okay, sign this. Uh, it's all right. Guy Whittingham says I'm all right to go. Uh, I'm going to go and work for Will Still in Reims. That's it. Sorted. Um, yeah, and, and and players, 
listen, and, and again, it, it, I think it's that change from what the Cowleys are doing to a new manager, new ideas. They seem to like it, so they're playing well. Now, mm-hmm. the last the last couple of games, Cambridge and, and um, um, Barnsley, performances mm-hmm. haven't been the same as they were before. So is there that bit of, now they're used to this now, and you know what else? What else is needed? How do you keep them going? That, I think mm-hmm. there's, I think there's twelve players out of contract at the end of the season. <laughs> Good lord! So from the point of view of a player, are you you, you want to play now? Because mm-hmm. you need to either get another contract here or make sure someone else knows that you're playing well to get a contract yeah. somewhere else. So I think there's that's come to the equation as well. And especially given the close proximity to the playoffs where, you know, you, it, promotion for Portsmouth isn't entirely off the cards, right? No. Um, we we said, we said I think we said at the barnsley Sheffield wednesday game, we said before the Barnsley game, if they come out with four points, that's brilliant. That's mm-hmm. really good. And it's still, mm-hmm. you know, it's still capability. So, mm-hmm. but if they come out with three points, then that's still pretty good. But it's mm-hmm. a big if for me, big if. Well, you know that's because that's because we're great right now. I don't. I don't know if you've seen it, guy. I. Uh... <laughs> it's. Been, I tell you what. It's. It, it's been weird because I. I do this show every week, and we sit there and we talk about. Well, he should have done this, and we should have signed this player, and we should have done this. We have nothing to say anymore. I'm running out of jokes. I'm now <laughs> finishing. Uh, you know, after show's now finished off with a quiz. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't got, there's no to talk about. We've got, yeah, we battered them. Yeah, sick. And it's been 21 weeks now, guy. I can't, yeah, wow. we've got nothing to talk about. And, and nobody's ever said that about me before. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's talk about uh, George Hurst now he's gone. Now, imagine last game, last game of the season last year, uh, I went I went up to Hillsborough, to, to home, and, uh, and me and my podcast compadre Ash, we went to uh, went to the Paboozer at 9 a.m. Classic. Well, I'm, it's the last day of the season, uh, guy. I'm, yeah, I'm out, out. Do, you know what I mean? And um, and I remember George Hurst going in the first seven minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, I, I think I just I think I just left and went for a beer at this point. I, 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 I was sobering <laughs> up as I was watching it. But do you feel like having played with his dad and and seen George closer than you would have done with the with the commentary role that you do for the club? Do you feel like there's similarities there, or is it the physicality he's missing? Does he not have Hursty's brain? Or I mean, yeah. what is it? Because he's not really set the world on fire, given no. that Leicester were chasing him all those years ago with us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and he was, you know, he was meant to be one of the bright stars of the future, wasn't he, at the time? Um, mm. Yeah, I, I think, I think maybe, maybe League One might championship might be his level. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly, uh, he certainly hasn't got the finish in his dad's had but from, no. from what I saw, you know, right. the ability to, you know, to be able to finish a half chance. Or, I mean, or, he could score from anywhere, his dad. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. He could, yeah. And I, I didn't see that in, in, in George. What I saw in George was when he picked up form, because it was a long time before he picked up form mm. and he clicked for him, was uh, his willingness to run mm-hmm. uh, was probably a bit more than his dad. <laughs> um, I don't know what you're talking about, guys. David, I'm just talking about for sake. <laughs> uh, but his his dad, yeah, his dad, uh, and his his dad's ability to hold the ball up as well, I think, was mm-hmm. was was a bit underrated uh, mm-hmm. as as a number nine, as a target man. Um, yeah, I think I think he was I think he was uh, very good at that. And so, so do you reckon he's still? I mean, he's he's only young still, isn't he? Is he what 23, yeah. 22 now, yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that, right? Yeah. So he's still got a bit of a career in front of him. I just, you know, there's there's part of me that wants to go ha, but then there's also part of me that goes, your surname's Erst. You need to be Ray yeah. God. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, the standard of of um, well, we're all we're all different, and it's, I don't think you can compare era to mm-hmm. era. But you mm-hmm. know, looking at how hard it is for to be a striker now because. A lot of teams are only playing one anyway. Yeah. You know, yeah, whereas, yeah. whereas in the past, you know, teams were playing two, most teams were playing two. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have you have things such like the the, the false nine now, uh and and the <laughs> and um, whatever that is. Uh, yeah, yeah. what do you call it? 10. What do you call it in the in old money at the FA? Like what, an attacking midfielder. Yeah. The false yeah. nine. The false well, number ten. All right. I, yeah. I, I I yeah, okay. I've got you now. I'll just uh, it's called a false nine. I'll just make a note of that now. For you. <laughs> yeah, it's the same okay. as the double pivot and the pivot and all that sort of stuff, and and the rest. That, of that's 
Honestly, what you just said then sounded like Ross and Rachel moving a settee upstairs on Friends in 1997. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. If that's a football term now, I don't want to know anymore. I'm too no. old for it now. I'm, no. I'm at that age now where it's called it's called a centre half. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Fullback. You know what I mean? That that's the name of them, as far as I'm concerned. Um, okay, so one final question then, guy, before I wrap this up. Uh, don't ask me. Don't, don't ask me what the result's going to be. I'm not going to. I'm not going to no. put you in that position, boss. <laughs> okay, I'm, honestly, I'm not. Uh, what sweets have you got planned? Uh, oh, for, right. Okay. Your, your sweet game on Twitter is, you know, sometimes you're splurging on P Percy Pigs, and yeah. then other times you're going spa own brand. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? No, I, I don't no. know where you're going. I know. Well, let me take some advice. What do you think the fans will be taking to this one? <laughs> I don't want to get anybody in trouble here, guy. Like you know, <laughs> what, I mean? <laughs> what what are they gonna? <laughs> what spice did oh, take? Okay, no sweets then. Sweets. Oh, sweets. Oh, sweets. 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 All right. Yeah. Sweets. 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 Sweet. Uh, what's, well, you know. what's a good one for 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 Sheffield Wednesday? Sheffield there. And what's what's a sweet that? Well, because we're all is... because we're all uh, you know big jawed old Yorkshire folk with big bulbous noses. I like a fruit pastel, me. You know, like the big ones. Right. Yeah, you know, you know the ones where you get in the bag that you're never allowed. You know, you know, you know when you're a kid and you get to a service station and there was all those sweets there that are obscenely expensive, and you'd be like, Dad, I want them. And be like, no, I can't, it's too expensive. And that's all you got told. So <laughs> when you're on an away day and money don't matter as much, they'll be getting them big bags of uh, the fun-shaped fruit pastels. I'm telling you. All right, see what I can do. <laughs> I'll call my supplier and see what he's got. Yeah, get get on to your sweet guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, thanks a lot, Guy. Uh, appreciate it. Let's have a good game on thanks, Saturday. Yeah. I might see you there. Yeah, no worries. Good to speak to you. Hello from the other side. Balls. Ghoulies. Champs. Tackle. Knackers. Shays long and armchairs. Dangleberries. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their performance package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and Shed Travel Bag. Bring your comfort and boxers to another level. Cojones. Pebbles. Gonads. Plums. Family jewels. Brass clankers. The fourth generation trimmer features our cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. It's also waterproof and has a 4K LED spotlight if you need a more advanced shave. Eggs. Itchy and scratchy. Mitchell Brothers. Jewels. Hanging Brain. Twin Bank Robbers. Chaps. Walnuts. Gobstoppers. Gooseberries. Stabilizers. The Manscaped 4.0 Bundle. It reduces your risk of getting an ingrowing hair. It keeps them clean. It keeps them tidy. And it also increases your chance of fellatio by about 15%. That works out about 2% if you're uh, if you're married. So, you know. Anyway, enter the code TWW20 into the checkout. That's TWW20 into the checkout. And you can get yourself a 20% discount. Not too shabby, eh? For our European listeners, Velata Testicular 